Assalamu alaikum, Namaskar, good evening. Have you been to out of Bangladesh to abroad and asked, where are you from? Are you from India? How did you respond to that? Did you not say, no, I'm not from India, I'm from Bangladesh. And then you went on explaining where exactly Bangladesh is and how beautiful Bangladesh is, right? What if somebody told you the very place that you call home, the smell, the surroundings, and everything is so special, is not going to be there years down the line. You will have to move. You will have to go to someone somewhere else, leaving your home. How do you feel about that? Back in 2009, almost a decade back, I was at MIT Energy Conference. So a panel started by throwing the question to the audience, have you given a thought to millions of people living in the coastal Bangladesh about their fate if you continue to consume the energy the way you do today? That very question sent butterflies in my stomach, but most importantly, a burning desire to learn more about what that question means for Bangladesh and the millions of people for Bangladesh. And that set me up for a journey over the last 10 years or so. And what I have learned over the journey of more than a decade, that's what I'm going to share with you. These are primarily three C's. Not really great, very concerning, very alarming. Let me start with the first C, that is the climate crisis. If sea level rises by 50 centimeter by 2050, more than 11% land in Bangladesh is going to be underwater. What that means? More than, one, more than 15 million, that is a core and 50 lakhs people need to move and it's going to affect life and livelihoods. And right now, we are not talking about the future. 700,000 people become refugees due to natural disaster, which is intensifying the frequency of it has increased over the years significantly and scientists attribute this to the climate change that is human induced. So that is the first C, the climax crisis. We all aware of it, we know about it. And this is a global phenomenon, but unfortunately Bangladesh is one of the countries which is getting the brunt of this effect is one of the worst victims of this climate change. This is a global phenomenon. Now let's look inward, domestically to Bangladesh. My second C, environmental crisis. All of you have handphones, mobile phones in your hand. Just Google, what is the air quality index today in Dhaka? Just Google, let me do it for you. I just looked it up before coming to the st stage. The air quality index in Dhaka today is between 250 to 30, 300. What does that mean? This means the air quality in Dhaka today is six to seven times worse than what is ideally should be. And we are inhaling this, right? We are here surrounded by this beautiful landscape, all the greenery is out here, right? Very beautiful. Do you know? Per capita, what's the forest cover in Bangladesh? Is 0.22 hectare. And that is one of the lowest in the world. In the last 20 years, we have lost more than 200 kilometers hectares of forest cover and tree cover. And every year, we are losing at a rate of 3.3%. This is, and in terms of deforestation, in South Asia, Bangladesh is like ranked stops in terms of deforestation rate in South Asia. See, I live in Boshundara, and during the monsoon, rainy season, even if there is a small rainfall, it becomes Venice. Venice of, I don't know, Venice of South Asia, at no cost. But it's, so, it's not so nice or not so great because the vehicle or the boat need to row through all the sewage and the, all the wastewater. So it's not great, right? So our wetlands are being taken up because for doing all this development work, and now we have to suffer from it, for it, right? Look at our rivers. 
there is a Buriganga, the one that's very close to us, Dhaleshwari. They are biologically dead. That means no living organism is there, right? Look at our forest and every other system in the earth system. We have degraded it very, very significantly. Now move to my third C, the ecological crisis. According to IUCN, 25% biodiversity that includes plant and animal species are endangered and some of which is are very, very critically endangered here in Bangladesh. So this is the overall picture. So let's take this, all these three C's, three crises that I have mentioned to all of you. The art system scientists have come up with the concept of planetary boundaries that includes climate change, ocean acidification, biodiversity loss, nitrogen cycle, phosphorus cycle, and so on. And they say that if we need to, if we would like to ensure a thriving planet that ensures the well-being of the people, then we will have to live within these planetary boundaries. But the sad, but the very unfortunate fact is that we are already overshooting some of these boundaries. Let's say the biodiversity loss and uh, ocean acidification and so on. So my very question to all of you then, how have we reached to this very critical point? A very tipping point. This hasn't been the case in the entire, in the, in the human history of last 2000 years. So this is a very unprecedented situation that we are living in. What has caused it to be here we are, where we are today? This is a question that we need to ask, right? So the journey that I have mentioned to you, that I have taken for the last 10 years, my realization, my understanding is that, that the unfettered, uncontrolled growth and development that I, we have focused on over the years is primarily responsible for that. We have focused on material growth, not spiritual growth. We have focused on economic progress, not really the well-being of, of the people and the planet. And that is at the heart of the problem. That is causing the, the damage and, and the serious crisis that we are facing as a human civilization. Now, my next question then, what is the way forward? Do we just talk about the problem? Discuss about the problem like we do in our uh, tea store? in our roadside tea store and everywhere we, when we gather together or we need to act to solve this problem. So the challenges, the crisis that I have mentioned to you, uh, I have the scenario that I have presented to you, my understanding and the very organization, Bangladesh Youth Environmental Initiative that I set up almost a decade back and the, the, the work that I do, we believe that the answer to these issues and challenges is planetary stewardship. What does that mean? Let me now explain to you what planetary stewardship means. That basically means two C's and one A. What is the first C? The first C is about consciousness. What consciousness? Consciousness is we, are, we human being is one of the species on this planet. We are not very special. And in the, in the human civilization, in many occasions, we know that this planet has thrown the humans out of this planet when needed. So in the future, we might be just thrown out of the planet. But anyway, my point here is we are one of the species. We are not superior. So we cannot exploit the planet. We cannot take advantage of it we will have to live in harmony, in balance between the physical environment and non-physical environment. If we lose the balance, if we disrupt it, I think we are, we are heading towards a doom, very unfortunately. So that level of consciousness we have been trying to imbue 
among the young generations, young people, school, college, university students that we have been working with for the last 10 years or so. That's our first C. The second C that we focus on in our programs is capacity. So what capacity? Capacity in terms of knowledge. This is a very complex problem. The future generation need to have a comprehensive understanding of this complexity of the challenges, interconnectedness of the challenges. So we try to imbue this knowledge among our young generations. And one thing that we try to underscore, prioritize here is the local knowledge and indigenous knowledge. That means here in Bangladesh, I mean, the solution that is applicable for United States, North America, Europe may not be applicable here in Bangladesh. We need to come up with our own solution that is fit for our context and for, the, for our purpose. So when we provide knowledge, we try to increase capacity of the young people. We try to provide the indigenous and local knowledge that often being proven over the years that it is, it is applicable in this context. It works, right? The second capacity that we would like to increase, that we work on increasing among young people, is leadership capacity. Often knowledge is not enough, right? Information is not enough. You need to act on it. And so we try to imbue leadership capacity among our young people so that they can act. They can solve some of the problems they can see within their communities. So that's my second C, capacity, knowledge and leadership, right? My third thing that we work on in addressing the challenge is about action. What does that mean? That means, I mean, I'm not the prime minister. I am not the minister. I'm a student. I do have certain capacity to act. I can do a tree plantation. I can carry on a cleanup drive and so on and on, right? So we not only provide education and knowledge and consciousness, we also engage young people in taking small actions that they are capable of doing. We, why, we, why this is important? You suddenly become a net top policymakers in the country. You become a very, uh, you, 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 um, you go in the high ups in our bureaucratic process or in our national policy making process. But in your earlier life, you have done nothing. It doesn't come automatically, it doesn't make you an, uh, an, an uh, environmental friendly person. It's need training, it's need engagement. And that's what we are trying to do by engaging young people in small action in a very early stages so that in the future, when they become influential, they can also take action and do things what necessary to protect our environment and protect our ecosystem and so on. So over the last 10 years or so, we have trained approximately 100,000 young people on environmental stewardship. We have educated thousands of young people across all over Bangladesh on interconnected environmental issues and challenges. We have set up 50 art clubs in school, college, universities all across Bangladesh. In the next 10 years or so, we would like to continue our work and train hundreds of thousands of these young people to become environmental stewards who will work proactively to protect and promote our environment. Now, we believe if we can do it at scale, that means if hundreds of thousands of young people join in our mission, that means become conscious, have the capacity and willing to act, we believe that the dream for a just, equitable and sustainable Bangladesh is very much possible. So, Action speaks louder than words. So let me try to summarize the essence of what we do and what we are trying to do by small exercises. 
So I would like to invite all of you, request all of you to join me in an in a exercise. So please follow me what I do. Okay? So if you please raise your hand. Take this finger. Two. Now three. Now four. Now five. Thank you very much. The message is change starts from you, me, then to my family, then to my community, then to the larger society. If a significant, a threshold level of people become conscious, have heightened consciousness, have the capacity and take actions, I think change is very much possible in Bangladesh. We believe so. So I hope some of you will join us in the journey. And thank you once again for listening to my talk. <laughs>